Chuck Lunick. I'm a Ukrainian American. Uh, was baptized with the name Yaroslav, which is also the name I use in the uh, historical reenactment group, the Society for Creative Anachronism. Well, I've been putting stuff up on my YouTube channel about being, you know, more into persona and, you know, getting into mythology and all that stuff. Well, this is different. This is a, uh, video about making armor. And I previously did a video on uh, the rescue of a helm that had a lot of problems and it's now become my fighting helm. Well, we're now headed back into Aidenveld, into Arizona, to work on a helm for my friend. And this is Ivar Kriegsvin. And I'm going to figure out what's going on with why we've been on the road driving into the Arizona sunrise. So here he's, here's Ivar. Okay, why are we doing this? Well, a couple reasons. Number one is I run the uh, local armory in my area, the Driver Armory. And I make a lot of armor. Uh, for new fighters uh, and I always try to find ways of making the armor inexpensive so that anyone that wants to play our game can get into the fighting and it's not going to cost them two or three thousand dollars and I've managed to do that a number of ways and the only cost prohibitive thing left for me to conquer to get people into armor cheaper is to learn how to build a helmet that's what I want to do today. Uh, so Ivan Armory has been gracious enough to allow me to come down there. Uh, I've bought all the equipment, all the things I need to make the helmet. Uh, now I'm just going to go down there and learn from the master, Ivan. And he will help me make this helmet. Hopefully give me a lot of good uh, information on how to construct a helmet and I'll be able to go back and take that knowledge back with me and maybe be able to produce helmets for my friends and also people that come in that are looking to fight in the SCA. So that's what we're doing right now. Uh, this helmet that I'm making now is going to be my second helmet. My first helmet is historically accurate uh, hip check helmet with a, you know, a human face type faceplate, although it looks really bitching, uh, the vision out of it is is not the, the vision that I would uh, I would like to have if I'm going to start fighting tournaments, so this is going to be probably most likely my tournament helmet, so I can just get a little bit better vision when I'm fighting. Well, you also wanted a lower profile, didn't you? Well, and a lower profile, less banglies hanging off the helmet that catch swords and things like that, so it's going to be a smoother helm, a lighter helm, and one with more vision. So that's, that's what we're doing. So hopefully it works out. Ivar and I had made the five and a half hour drive before to Apache Junction in order to work on my helm. And I did a video about that um, and the whole process of, you know, refurbishing what I like to call the rescue. And another member of our household also made the drive to pick up a helm because he wanted to do it personally so that we would all start to have this Eastern flavor in our household and in our fighting gear. So when we got there, after five and a half hours, we wanted to get to work right away. Um, if you trim them, then they fit pretty well for... Um, for welding. Okay. And as long as my thumb doesn't go in there, the mm. eye opening's legal. Yes, right. Um, so, if you want, what you can do is I can mark out where the excess can be cut off. Okay. And then what 
you're going to, what, uh, what I'll have you do is you're going to center punch and drill the hole. Since we're doing cheeks, uh -huh. the cheeks are going to go under yeah. the dome and over the drill. Okay. okay. So are you going to end up attaching the face plate first or what? Yeah. What we're going to do is uh, trim it up to get it ready. He's going to drill the holes, grind the weld flush. I might need to back pedal backfill a little bit of welding so you might have to do some of the you know weld grind weld grind okay kind of thing and then this gets welded to the top and then we pattern for the cheeks and back way okay front and back back and front whatever um, and this distance Mm -hmm. Isn't necessarily always the same as this distance. distance. Okay. Okay. Uh, they're they're never perfectly symmetrical. Things that you could do here stylistically, mm -hmm. see, since we are going to be welding this on, I can bring this up a little bit higher, mm -hmm. and if you want, what that would allow you to do, just put a little shape. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Totally up to you. That's just an aesthetic thing. Mm -hmm. Some people prefer the flat across, the brow kind of glare, mm -hmm. but this is but, one of those things that has to be decided before we will. Let, let's go straight across because uh, th at this point, I want to. I'm trying to learn the basics. Okay. And the more. Basic got your lever openings but I always check the profile because sometimes when you have enough room for for a nose mm -hmm. you've got a nose so yeah I got a nose we'll 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 have enough room for that because the way I formed it you've got that yeah that bowl yep so it comes away from your face yeah that's what I kind of like about that is it they do it is there's a lot of different out. ways that you can form these and and, and, and tweak them but I always have that and that's why I, I that, that's why I like welding them on okay center punching and drilling out the holes. You could do it when these things are still flat, but it's always easier to do this before they're actually welded onto the bottom. Okay. So, center punch, if you don't mind using mm -hmm. that hammer, yeah, yeah. any part of the anvil or even um, this stake or this stake, you can center punch on whatever, whatever is most comfortable for you. Okay.
start welding, the better. So you want your fitment to be as close as possible to the forehand. So the front is usually is, no, is usually not a problem, okay? Okay. But you see how the fronts of these side tabs mm -hmm. are a little bit proud. Yeah. Okay. There's a couple of different ways that you could that you could fix that, and that's pushing that up. Now on to the drill a little bit. And I'm going back and forth. Bringing it in. Now it's flush. Once the grill was on, it was time to make a pattern for the cheek plates and see how they fit. Okay. Then a pattern had to be made for the back plate. Pattern for a bit of Slavic bling, a trezub. Padding, yeah. your brow padding is going to come in. 
and push the whole thing a little bit forward. That yeah. This is just you know. Yeah. Yeah, plenty of. And with my mouth all the way open, my. That's one of the things I like about that design. Yeah, it really, it, it really like goes around your face. Yeah. You see, when I pat it, I'll have it more like this. So now the standoff on the nose is nice. Oh yeah. Okay. The end of a five or five and a half hour work day in the shop.